Well, good morning. This is Tampa Home Talk. I'm your host, Katrina Madewell, and I am here with my co-host, Mr. Leo Kane with Barrel Engineering and Inspections. I'm so excited to be here today, coming off a very exciting event we had last night. Um, how many people did we have? We had a solid 25, 30 people show That's up at awesome. the Home Buyer Workshop last night. And the questions that our guest had for Adam Talley with Talley Insurance that sponsored it with, with some sandwiches and stuff because it was traffic was horrible. People were late. We were supposed to start at 6, and we only had maybe one person there at 6. Oh, no. So we ended up starting probably 6.15, 6.20. It timed out perfect. We ended right on time. ton of questions. It was a really, really, really great event. And uh, some of the questions these guys asked related to insurance were really good. So when you're sitting there at 6.01 and everyone's stuck in traffic, but you don't know that yet, um, what is going through your mind? Like, you're going to have to eat all the sandwiches? Well, you have to give them away? Actually, my team, because I got there earlier than they did, my team said, traffic is horrible. Uh, people are, are definitely going to be late. There was a couple accidents nearby, and I'm like, okay, perfect. We had some people that actually came to our office here in Lutz. And oh, we, wow. We were at the main Keller Williams office in Tampa, so they had cut, came here and then rushed over there. Um, but all in all, I thought it was a phenomenal turnout. People were asking us, when is the next one we're going to do? So that's a good sign. And uh, we had people that brought guests as well, and so it was awesome. We I heard really, you might be considering doing this monthly. I think we may, yeah. I think we may do this monthly. I think, um, you know, they people really enjoyed it. We got sort of the, we haven't done a home buyer workshop, Leo, in probably 13 or 15 years. We haven't done one in a long time. Is there a number they can reach out to to find out when the next one is? Yeah, just call or text 813-377-2775. Just text home buyer workshop and we will get you the information on the next one. 813-377-2775. You can call or text that off air number. And uh, we have some guests, uh, speaking of running late, we had a couple guests coming. I imagine they're probably a little late in traffic this morning, but they'll be along and we'll introduce them when they get here today not only is it national fun at work day which is what our guests are going to be related to you're going to enjoy them does that mean like bagel friday or like cake birthday cake lunch what so, does this mean what does this mean we'll talk about it in a minute but the last friday of january is national fun at work day today it's also national spouses day we'll talk about both of those as well in a minute let's roll through our numbers so we can get that at the top of the hour for anyone waiting for that and then we'll dive into what that is and what it means and hopefully our guests will be here by that time so uh, the number of new listings on the market this week is coming in at 840 Here's the, here's, oh, look, they even got that, that would be a year high, high, wouldn't it? So far, yes, 840 is the highest. And January's getting stronger and stronger. 820 last week we were, look at this, the price increase is 116. There was 94 last week. So crazy. Yeah, that still like, it baffles me when price decreases are above 1,000, how anything can be price increased. I know. The price uh, decreases are coming in at 1,030 for the week. Uh, the number of sold properties, 456. Surprisingly, not the high of the year, though. No, it is not. We have to look at these solds compared to new, right? And there's less selling than coming on the market. So we're we're kind of shifting towards that balanced market. It's been a weird little ebb and flow, like where we saw the absorption rate go up a little bit, come down a little. And so I think we're just going to probably hang in this general window of probably three to six months absorption rate. It's got to be percentages. I mean, a lot of times you have to take a data set like this and you normalize it using percentages. Okay. So instead of talking about just a pure number like 840 versus 576, which would have been the first week of January for new listings, you'd be talking about it like a 27% increase. So you're talking about month over month, week over week, or you you would look at the percentage of new to sold? Or well, what? I would kind of treat this like I would a financial statement, and I'm only doing that because we're heading into tax season, and financials should be on the on the forefront of a lot of business owners' minds as they formulate their QuickBooks or their Inuit or whatever else they have into some kind of sheet to give their accountant. But what you should be looking at is your balance sheet, your financial statement, your profit loss statement. You, uh, your cash flow statement, you really should be analyzing those using percentages. That way, you can take a look at how impactful or how effective these increases or decreases are. So if we compare new to sold, 840 to 456, it's about a 
difference. But if we look at it two weeks ago, it was 710 to 446. So basically, there was a lot less new on the market compared to sold. And then you start to see other numbers because that becomes like a 70% number. So you can really start to see the market shifts if you look at it in terms of percentages rather than just the raw numbers. So that's that ramp up that we're seeing in January, right? That uptick in new listings. So uh, so should we compare probably sold, right, to new, don't you think? Sold to new? Well, I mean, you have to think of the life cycle of a listing. Your listing is going to start off new. It's going to go pending. And then it's going to become sold. And typically, there is a what thirty month, uh, thirty month, thirty day difference between when it's new and when it's sold, or when it's when it's pending and when it's sold. Yeah, at least. Okay. Yeah, at least if there's any delays, and then the marketing time's a little longer right now as well. So, I mean, the marketing time that I'm seeing on on you know sort of I hate to say averages, but like in the middle, is probably anywhere from seven to twenty some days, and that's normal. Like even if it's priced right, shows well, pictures are rocking, that's about the normal time frame for a, a listing to be marketed before it gets an offer. So if we were going to be super accurate on percentages, we should be comparing this week's new listings to, actually no, we should be comparing this week's pending to three weeks ago's new Based on the timeline on the market. And we should be comparing this Three week's weeks sold. Three weeks or 30 days. Yeah, I mean. 30 days probably, yeah. I don't know. We'll have to figure that out. But we really should be doing some advanced. We've been doing this for years now. We should do some advanced I'm analytics. I'm going to let you play with the numbers and figure out the best way to do the advanced analytics. I'll uh, give you the data you need uh, and we'll need, help calculate it. two months backwards. Because what I'm thinking is i got to take. I, I got to start with sold. And then I've got to go 30 days back to see what that was for pending. And then I've got to go 30 days back to see what that was for new. Yeah. And with those percentages, we can actually truly track the absorption rate. Okay. Just hear me. I'm an engineer. And just hear yeah. me out. That's how Listen. you use the data. Because right now we got a snapshot of what's happening Listen, this week. I'm all about adding more data because I love the fact that we already have four years worth of data. Like you geek out on that way more than I do. But there's a part of me that really likes that too. I mean, this is a spreadsheet. So I think we can just add a couple of columns here that auto auto do the calculation. And then Heck we yeah. can talk about the, the, we can track this absorption rate, especially since there's a thought right now that we're going to have some um, insurance um, uh, mortgage. What is that? More rate, rates decreases. We're going to have some drops. Are we for, supposed to still have for interest rates? Yes, that that was it. Yeah, there's. I mean, the feds are supposed to be there. I mean, they're predicting that they're going to do some some rate decreases this year. But honestly, like if you ask me, you look at it big picture, and I've said this a couple times on the show, the feds were too late to increase the rate for it to have the impact that they were looking for. That's why they had to make it so fast and furious because they were catching up for what they didn't do sooner. Like the impact was already there. So you have to come in with a heavier hand, right? So to speak. So if they... They're, and they're looking at all these other numbers, right? We talked about like the consumer price index. They're looking at all these inflationary numbers and things like that. So when that's controlled and sort of slows down a little, I feel like the good faith, right, like thing to do might be for them to, I think three would be too many. In my opinion, I think three rate decreases this year would be too much. But when we're looking at these advanced analytics now, we'd be able to, come, we'd be able to see did the price, uh, did the inf interest rate did the I can't think of the word for some reason did the interest rate decrease have an impact a direct impact on the market it, I think if we're it tracking well I know it well well let's in tracking advanced analytics we should be able to see that clearly I know it well for a fact I just know that you know just from doing it for so long and also looking at this data I, I, I know it well for sure we're seeing it right now like buyers in the market are waiting in the side wing saying you know I think I'm just going to wait for interest rates to drop and we tell them well what do you think's going to happen let's just say theoretically we had three rate dips this year what do you think would happen to the market especially in Tampa price increases Exactly. It's going to be more competitive. The absorption rate is going to fall further and the price increases are going to go back up. I think the big picture is we're not even to a balanced market yet. I, with these numbers, we can't be. I mean, we still have, with new listings are still lower than pendings. 
Um, we'll never get there. We will, but it's a slow process as it should be, right? Nothing should be fast and furious or quick or like the wild stuff we've seen over the last couple of years. It should be a much slower process for, for these numbers. But what I do find interesting is the amount of pendings is d about double the amount of solds. Does that mean a lot of the d these deals are falling through? Stuff falls through, yeah. Stuff falls mm -hmm. through all the time. Stuff falls through. So so maybe a pending, you now this is just, this isn't something we can track, but maybe a pending becomes a soul, a, a Maybe half of the pendings that don't become solds are actually then become back on the market. That's right. the, so you're talking right. about the life cycle like of a listing. What does that look like? Back on market. And so theoretically, if it's a new listing and then it goes pending and it's sitting and pending, right? It's one of these 896 on the market this or 895 on the market this week. Um, and let's say inspections don't go well with barrel and they're like, yeah, I'm not buying this house this way. It's not a year ago. You got to fix this, this, and this, or I don't want to buy the house with the old roof. And the buyer's like, yeah, no, I'm not buying it with the old roof. And so the seller's like, yeah, I'm not changing the roof. My roof is perfectly good, right? It's what they always say. And so theoretically at that point, you are going to have a listing that went from pending to back on the market. So there was 215 of those this week. And so when you look at that, even as a percentage to newer pending listings, actually to, to pendings probably would make more sense, right? About 20, 25%. Yeah. So, so what 20, was canceled then? So canceled and withdrawn is like where, so withdrawn is I think more seller controlled, like the seller wants to withdraw it off the market. Yeah, right. Canceled is like maybe the listing broker pulled it and said, yeah, we're not going to do it. I don't know why they have these in two columns because they're kind of one and the same, really. Yeah, withdrawn and canceled kind of mean the same thing. I thought canceled might be a canceled contract. No, it's not. It's where they pulled the listing off the market. And I think par part of the reason why we have two columns and it's a little bit like snafu -y in the data is because they added this status a while back that's like withdrawn conditionally or unconditionally. And I think part of that might have a role in terms of what column it goes in. I, it just skews the data. I'd lump them together. So theoretically, for the amount of listings we have on the market this week, we should be taking the new column and the back on market column and adding those two numbers together. Sort of, yeah. And we should be comparing that to the number yeah. of pending. So. And it's not always that it went from pending to back on the market. It's not always that. Part of this that makes it hard to track is NARS like hand in it, right? Telling us how we're going to do it in terms of pocket listings, right? But like in the past, I would very often have a seller hire me I mean, there was times people would hire me a year in advance to counsel them through the process of getting their home ready for sale, but they weren't actually ready within that year. And so that contract would expire and we have to sign a new one, right? And so that's the way I always like to do business. It's on the seller's time frame based on the information, the data we give them based on how fast or slow they want to move. We'll, we'll launch the listing at that time. But when the market was so crazy and competitive, NAR put in place this clear cooperation rule, which says now you have to tell the MLS exactly what day you're going to activate it like in advance when you take the listing and you have to also uh, put it in within x number of days of public marketing don't agree with that either because there's times that especially like high profile sellers there's a lot of them that would not want their listing in the mls right or necessarily even on those third-party sites which we can control but there's times where people just want us to sell the home within our network Right, because right. they don't want a lot of people in their house, and uh, unfortunately, NAR has taken away that ability to do that because if we we can't even publicly advertise or market that even to a small group um, without opening it up to everybody. So, I think with all the changes, that's going to be one of them coming up in the future as well. It's been a fun topic. We'll probably chat about this a little bit more when we come back. And then we'll dive into National Fun at Work Day. This is Tampa Home Talk. Our author number is eight one three. 377-2775, 813-377-2775. We'll be right back. Stick around. Welcome back. This is Leo Kane with Barrel Engineering and Inspection. Um, National Spouses Day and Fun at Work Day. They're almost like 
The well, spouse got jealous that there was a fun at work day and then decided to put that on the no, same day and no, conflict with each other? It's not always the same day. So National Fun at Work Day has to be a Friday. is the last Friday of January. It has to be a Friday. So it just so happens that it's on today's date, which is what day? Is it the 29th? Uh, 26th. What's today's date? 26th. Okay, yeah, the 26th. And then National Spouses Day is always January 26th. Well, it just sounds like it's a move on the spouses to, like, uh, it's a jealousy move, actually, <laughs> because th the two shouldn't be on the same day. Because if I'm having fun at work, I'm nowhere near my spouse. Well, this year it is. So National Fun at Work Day is today. So, you know, there's that national calendar, right, where there's, like, all these things have a national day. Did you know that every state actually has a national day, too? Yeah, definitely. When's Florida's? I forget. It's on my calendar. It's on my radio calendar. Yeah, so this is the problem. Do you know what it is? I don't, I don't know, know what it is. I have to look it up. This is the problem with these 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 days that every single day has something that you could be celebrating. There's some religion attached to it, and you can ask for the day off from your employer, and they can't say no. We're going there? Oh, my gosh. That's not what I was expecting. Where, where, where are we supposed to go? Well, today is about being at work and having National Fun at Work Day. So you're supposed to fight these workday doldrums and have some fun during That's the true. day. Speaking of uh, nationals, do you know what genre the national anthems are? Blues. Country. <laughs> That's good. I should have got that one. Dang. Should have got that one. Is that the dad joke? No, Close maybe. Enough? I, I yeah, just kind of made okay. that one up. So the theory and the idea behind National Fun at Work Day is people spend so much time of their life at work. So they are saying, why not enjoy it, right? Look for the fun things to do at work and let your imagination be the leader. Make sure to obtain your boss's approval, of course, for whatever fun and exciting things you decide to do. But even better yet, get your boss involved. So what about Beryl? Does Beryl know that it's National Fun at Work Day? Uh, I didn't know. I mean, we have a planning party committee. They have their own email group chain. I'm not in it. So I, I don't know. you're not fun. No way. You're I'm not, not fun. Yes. So I think, uh, yeah, we should have let them know this. So, you know, some of the things on here, this was interesting, Leo. It says, how to observe fun at work day how to observe it i'm just curious what you think about this so the first thing on the list is host a boss look-alike contest <laughs> what do you think that would be like if someone did a boss look-alike contest and they're dressing like leo coming to work well actually a uh, funny story on uh, for halloween the whole office dressed as me what yeah they did because i have like a jacket i'm always wearing and i'm usually unshaven and my hair is usually unkempt so um yeah they with they the green barrel shirt the green barrel and shirt the pants. and the pants so yeah they all did dress as me and they took a group photo it's actually pretty neat did they know did you know that's what they were doing i had no or idea you just thought everybody's in uniform that day <laughs> i know there was perfect everything looked perfect that day and i just couldn't put my finger on it so i well there's a, a they see a lot of people like you that dress the same because you go like this every day right it's not just a friday thing it's an everyday thing for you Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, I like the idea, like the Homer Simpson technique. I'm going to open my closet. There's going to be the blue pair of pants, the white polo shirt. I don't have to think. So I'm going right. to have, in my world, I'm going to have a, gray, a black pair of slacks and I'm going to have a green barrel polo shirt. So, so it's just easy that way. Fun fact, the people that do that, it's 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 proven, like when you look at the people that actually do this, they're considered high level, high IQ, smart like people I'll give you an example of people that do that so, so people who are incredibly lazy when it comes to clothing choice people that wear the same thing so that's never a decision to think which by the way it seems to be dudes that do that I don't know many chicks that do that but anyway Gary Keller is a good example always wears pretty much the same thing every day it's just easy at work you find him in a pair of jeans and a shirt like either a solid <laughs> well, shirt. Be, I hope he's wearing pants and a shirt. No, no, no. like <laughs> jeans, always jeans, yeah. and like either a solid black shirt, which is normally what he does, or sometimes he'll wear like some KW swag type shirt. And uh, Steve Jobs was another one that did the same thing. I mean, that's the whole reason why I formed a company. So I would have a company uniform that I can just wear every day and not feel like people are making fun of me. What would you wear before the company? Oh, I had a, um, I had gray um, short sleeve button up shirts with black slacks so when you go out during the weekend does your wife dress you no but she does get upset with me because i normally grab whatever the same stuff or whatever's on top i grab it on top okay and then as things get washed they're back on top so i end up wearing cycling through the same four or five fancier shirts because they're on top she doesn't mix it up put different stuff on top she tells me i'm old enough to figure this out myself and okay. i tell her i'm lazy when it comes to dressing 
And I'll grab what's on top, and she has not yet shuffled my clothing deck. The turtle shirt was pretty rocking last week. Did you get any comments from Oh, the, I got a lot of comments. See? A lot of positive comments. Everybody liked that yeah. shirt. You have to tell your friend that got that for your birthday. I did, and I washed it, and guess what? It's on top again. It's on top. <laughs> So a couple other fun ways to observe uh, National Have Fun at Work Day today. Uh, organize a chili cook-off. I might be a little late to do that one, but maybe next year you could do it. Oh, with all the crock pots coming in, the chili cook-off would be nice. Yeah. Another one is, but, are you going to the office when you leave here? Or where are you going today? I'm definitely going to the office. So here's one. You could go to the office singing random songs. No. Maybe you could sing a country song. No. Like the National Anthem. No. <laughs> what were you going to say? No. <laughs> You don't like that idea? You don't want to walk in the barrel singing? I think if you're going to do a chili cook-off at work, though, it needs to be later in the afternoon. So when everyone gets the post-chili chilies, they're not in the office. (laughs) Yeah, probably might be wise to do that. Or they're all going to leave early. (laughs) So I think you should totally go in singing random songs. I'm just saying. I think some of this stuff is is geared towards these white-collar type office setting jobs that exist only on TV. Because... Some of these you don't have the opportunity to. Like when I look at a couple of these, I'm like, what? All right, so here's a good one, Pat George. One of them is set up cornhole game in the break room or any appropriate space. That's it. I That's think in Beasley, you should set up cornhole in the hallway where all the on-air signs are. And you guys just do cornhole there. Like when you pop out of one of the studios, throw it down the hall, Q105 or towards Wild, throw, throw cornhole. And, uh, with the noise, yeah. Does, with the do you noise guys have, through the studio? No. Do you have cornhole there? Yes, we do. <gasps> Ooh, do it, Pat George. Do it and just say, "Hey, this was Katrina Madewell's idea. I'm throwing th- this in the hallway because it's you know it's National Fun at Work Day." You're welcome. Anytime. Where, where's the good stuff at National Fun at Work Day? Where's where's the making the midday martini or the old fashioned? I. It wasn't my list. I mean, there's that's if I'm gonna have fun at work, there's gonna be alcohol involved. Well, what, what would you, what else would you do, Pat George, for have fun at work day? What would that look like at a radio station? Well, at a radio station, the most fun we have is when uh, you know we get free food. That's what I was gonna say. We had uh, frosties from Wendy's, we had pizza, we had cake this week, red velvet cake from the Cake Girl, and so on. We, that's our favorite thing. You know, you're only in radio for a couple things, the free stuff and the food. True. Definitely not the one. I can tell you, like, being at the station, you probably remember this too, Leo, but when we're at the station with them, they have a break room, and so all the people from all the stations and all the places and even the back offices, they all come out for the food. So they like that. Hey, Pat. Yeah. You know, during COVID, no one was getting any of my dad jokes, right? Well, I just figured they were inside jokes. <laughs> so good. They don't play. He's got a lot of them. Thank you. Well, gentlemen, today is also National Spouses Day. So this particular day, hey, now, National Spouses Day is on the 26th each year, and it's supposed to celebrate the bond between two people and set aside time for couples to show each other gratitude. Wait, I only have to do that one day a year? I hope my husband's... I hope my husband's not listening. He's going to be like, today is National Spouses Day. You have to take the rest of the afternoon off with me. That's what he's going to say. Hey, is this a once a day, uh, once a day, once a year thing? I mean, don't I have to do this once a year? Uh, well, I think this is supposed to be a little extra. I'm just saying. Extra. Extra. So this is the day, if it really is National Spouses Day, where you should spend it apart if you really want to enjoy the day. That's it's why it's not, not Fun at Work Day. It's not National Me Day. It's National Spouses Day. No, it's National Fun at Work Day. That too. It's that too. But it's this, National Mandatory Overtime Without Getting Compensated Day. It's uh, So it, National Spouses Day is meant to recognize spouses everywhere and observance to remind us to take time for our mate from being thankful to fulfillment and security of long-term relationships to boosting the morale of the well-being provided by your spouse. There's many reasons to celebrate. So this day is a time to show your spouse that you care and appreciate all the things that he or she does for you at home. What about they, them? Well, whatever it is for you. I, I don't know. Can you can you look it up? It's if there's a day called it's like National Calendar or like National's Day. You can Google it and it comes right up. 
poke around on that site and see if you can tell where it originated. That's a good question, Pat. Origin of the national calendar days. Calendar. We'll tell you that when we come back after this break here on Tampa Home Talk. Our off-air number is 813-377-2775. Looks like our guest is going to no-show, so I'm glad I didn't introduce them. We'll talk about them next time if they come. 813-377-2775. This weekend is the Kumquat Festival. It's also the day parade for Gasparilla that allows the day drinking, so probably no kids at this one. Night night parades in a couple weeks i'm going i'll be in the crew of brigadoon we're pretty far back on this one i think float 40 something maybe i forget i have to look at the email but i'm in crew i'm in crew of brigadoon if you hold up a brigadoon sign or champa home talk i'll make sure you get some extra beads stick around we'll be right back Welcome home. This is Bill, Engineering Inspections, Leo Kane, sitting next to Katrina Madewell's KW. Yeah, we're we're rocking the house. We're gonna have to fill in this uh this last half hour. So we time. actually looked it up, and a gentleman. Yeah. So go go back to the question because we might have some. So else oh yes, that is true. The so the question was, where do all these crazy days come from? Like National Popcorn Day and National Have Fun at Work Day and National Spouses Day. So like today. apparently, there was a gentleman who happens to be a radio talk show host, who also happens to be an entrepreneur. He wanted to know when National Popcorn Day was. So he started, he was researching it online, and he said, screw it, I'm going to create a calendar. And now that calendar organization catalogs uh, 1,100 days was when it first started. But now there's a committee. They review 18,000 submissions a year. Oh, wow. They get paid between $2,300 and $4,000 per submission. Wow. To add, and it's committee to add days to the calendar. So it's actually a pretty lucrative business at this point because if you have a committee of like seven people, each getting 4,000 times 18,000. So let's do the number. Let's do the 4,000 times 18,000. So it's a seven point. $72 million a year business. Wow. Who is this Marlo Anderson He's a tech guru. That's who he is. Let's see who he He's is. invented his own Bitcoin. I, I mean, he didn't who actually invent a Bitcoin, Marlo but I mean, Anderson. in doing something like this, he's basically mining. According to Wikipedia, Marlo Anderson is a technology talk show host, entrepreneur, and the founder of National Day Calendar. I'll say. I just said that. $72 million. I, that's, it, yeah, just doing the raw math. I mean, you take the 18,000 submissions times the $4,000 fee, that's $72 million. That's per year. Have you heard of him, Pat? Where is he a talk show host? you know? I've never heard that. He right, so North Dakota. Up. North Dakota. Where is Marlo Anderson to talk? Oh, never mind. Just pull up North Dakota. Oh. Ah, see. The, where Do you see that in there? Yeah, it was in the article. That's North the, Dakota. The, of course, because there's nothing to do up there. I guess you got to get creative if you're a talk show host. He's, an on, he's truly an entrepreneur. He's invented this National Calendar Day. So, I mean, if he ha- started with 1,100 items on the calendar, that's equating to about three per day. But there's only, yeah, there's a lot of stuff per day. And there's only 365 days in a year, maybe. <laughs> if you're lucky. Except... Um, this, Leap didn't, year. This, didn't this year have 366 year? days this year? Let me. Right, got 29 days. Is it this month? Let's yeah, see. it's an attempt by the Democrats to put Biden in office for one more day. <sighs> it is. <laughs> you know, my youngest daughter. Wait, she, you just missed the joke. I'm completely. not even going to. I heard you. I'm not going to. I'm not even going to comment. My youngest daughter was born March 1st. And I totally wish that it was a year that had 29 days in February because she would have been born February 29th. Oh, that would have been. Painful. I mean, that you, would have been so cool. Mid eighties before she's allowed to drink alcohol. It would have been so freaking cool. Oh, I'm sorry, you're not 21 yet. You only have to celebrate birthdays once every four years. That's it's kind of it's kind of cruel. I think it would be so cool. cruel. I would cruel. love to be born on February 29th. Oh yeah, you'd be you'd be an eight year old. Well, no, but technically your birthday is pretty darn cool. I don't know. Not everybody has a birthday on a day like February 29th that doesn't come around every year. I'm just saying. Well, did you know that? Oh, where are you going? Where am I always going? Cosmel on the Paradise? On the Paradise? Oh, yeah. Mm. Love it. So I read this statistic, and it actually is true. If you get 23 people in a room, 
Odds are two of those people share a birthday. Really? Yeah. Who would have thought? The, the statistician. That's who pretty who interesting investigated. odds. It actually makes a lot of sense because if you look at certain holidays like 4th of July, Valentine's Day, New Year's Eve, those are baby making days. <laughs> so all you need is a couple of baby making days to overlap with people in the room and then you're, you're set to go. That's why you have so many birthdays in November, for instance. I wonder how many people try to get married on that day. On February 29th? Oh, I bet a lot. They probably booked that up, like... I don't know. We're still in the middle of winter. Months, years, and I don't know. I bet you they booked it Yeah, because all, all you have to do is that little go- groundhog has to see his shadow in a couple of days, and then we have six more weeks of winter, and the uh, world turns to pot. Well, it'll be boating season again soon <laughs> in Tampa. When is when, Boating season starts this Saturday, right? I don't know. Like, it needs to be a little warmer than the Gulf is right now. I'm just saying. But does, does, does the flotilla come in on... Yeah, it does, but they don't get out of the water. They all jump off the float. Yeah, well, it's still boating. Hey, let me ask you guys a question, because now that your guest didn't show up, maybe we can change the topic just a little bit for a moment. Oh, we definitely can. We got a little time. (laughs) The ballot this November is recreational marijuana, and they're all talking that this time it's probably going to pass. Didn't it pass last time? No, no, no. It'll be back on the ballot for Florida to be recreational marijuana. What are bad? What do you guys think? I, I only think it's bad because the feds need to change their thing because I hear too many stories in states like Colorado where people who are recreationally marijuana are getting arrested because they're on federal property, like parks, for instance. And, and I think if you have that imbalance where federal contracts, like what, so what happens, so Pat, what happens, like we have a state contract that says that all of our employees have to be drug free. So if recreational marijuana passes, the state's not going to change our contract, and now it's in conflict with each other, and I'm not hiring a team of lawyers to get our state contract signed. So I think from those standpoints, it's like a half measure. But, so to add on to that, you should have an employment contract, right? And we talked about this a little bit last week on the show, Leo. It's no different than like 100 years ago when alcohol was legalizing. I think that's the modern day world we live in i don't smoke but i'm just saying i think that's what it is and it would be no different than an employee showing up to work drunk right they can't come to work high. well it's so here's the difference between alcohol and marijuana though i, I go home i partake in a margarita and then i have an old-fashioned and then i down it with a, a gin fizz um i get pretty sloshed i wake up in the morning i probably have a headache but i have no blood in my alcohol now if i smoke marijuana no, blood in my alcohol. Uh, three days late. Thank you. So a couple of days. So I smoke marijuana on Sunday. I well, actually, I smoke marijuana on Saturday. I'm having a ripping time. It's Gasparilla, having a great time. Hit a, hit a joint, do some Delta Eight, chase it with some Delta Seven, take a couple of gummies, confuse them for. I'm I out know, of control. right? Okay, I, where is the show going? I then, I then down a whole flask of tequila. That's going to be my Saturday, th- theoretically. I get drug tested on Wednesday. I'm not high. I lose my job because that uh, that that marijuana is still showing up in my bloodstream four days later, and, and that that's where things get difficult. As yeah. an employer, as an employer with these mixed mixed matched rules of at the federal level you can't do it, and at the state level, you, they're not changing their drug free work policies. So now, as an employer, it becomes very dicey. I don't want to stop the employees from relaxing on their free time however they want to um yet it might impact the work day but it is it's still in their their blood and then by it still being in their blood in trace amounts does that mean it actually has an impact on them is it changing their personnel what does that actually mean i'll tell you this Hmm. i don't smoke either now i have indulged in the past i'm not going to say that i haven't but i just don't like doing that it's not not the biggest thing i do not like because it's putting this in your lungs and I can't stand the smell and if it does pass that's yes that's how much you're going this is the crazy part what about getting in an uber and you just had somebody that got in an uber that was all high you get in the uber can you trust that uber driver it's not him well I I still think I I am with you, Pat George, on that because we already smell it everywhere when you go out in public. Like it's already too much, and it's not even legal. So I do, I totally agree with you on that because even my husband and I, like every time we go out, we're like skunkweed. Ugh, we're we're like 
But you look at the states that have legalized it recreationally. I mean, the, the the rules are still in effect. You're not smoking in the Uber, uh, or the or the Lyft or the rideshare. I mean, it, it's still like you're not smoking in public places. You, you you still have to go to designated smoking zones. But that stuff is so sm- strong. Like they could smoke in their house, and then they come out if they're in the car. It is strong. It's, it's like lingers. S- it's the same thing if you smoke cigarettes. Especially if you're around someone that's quit smoking cigarettes, they're even more sensitive to it. So, I mean, I, I think that's a, a drastic, like, o- overstatement of what it's going to actually be like. And, and you have to think, like, today's younger Gen Alphas, they don't really smoke, they don't really drink. They're not going to all of a sudden, you're going to see jewel pens all over the place. It's going to be more edibles, things of that nature. I mean, I, I hate smoking, I hate the burn, I hate coughing. Um, cigars, cigarettes, any of those things. But if you give me um, a substance I can put in my body without destroying my lungs and burning my throat, like drinking um, or eating, I, I like partaking gummy-ing. or gummying, which is basically eating. I mean, these are methods that you could still get your high, but at the same time, you're not. You, it's not readily apparent to everyone around you. Now, the danger with doing eating versus smoking is it takes 30 to 45 minutes to kick in. So there's a higher chance that people could, I don't want to say OD on weed, but there's a higher chance that people can take too much and have some serious side effects from taking too much because mm-hmm. they just didn't think it kicked in. Right. It also lasts a lot longer than alcohol. 20 years ago, that's exactly what happened to me and a friend at a wedding. Someone brought some brownies and we said, hey, stuff doesn't work. Yeah. And uh, well, 30 minutes, 45 minutes later after we ate, you know, half the tray... <laughs> I tell you, I accidentally had a bite of one one time, and I didn't even eat it. Like, I took a little bite, and then I ended up spitting the rest out, but I don't smoke or do any of that. So, and I had, I'll never forget this. I went Christmas shopping, and I was with my son, and my son was probably eight at the time, and we were literally, we had, I just, anyway, I won't say where I was at, but I grabbed this brownie, had a piece of it, realized what it was, spit it out, but I'd already ingested some of it. Then I went to Christmas shopping. I was in in the Burlington outlet. I'll never forget this. And I went in with my son, and obviously that was when it kicked in because I went in, and I was like, I remember just feeling lost. Like, I didn't know how to get out of the store. It was awful. And I, I just remember, like, standing there, like, feeling weird, like, trying to protect my kid, but I'm feeling, like, paralyzed myself. And then, and then I realized what's happening. And I told my son, I'm like, go get your dad. Go get your dad. Nice. I need your dad. Go get your dad. <laughs> so he went and got his dad. And I was like, I got to go. I don't know how to get out of the store. <laughs> so did you return the pink suit on the three or four days later that you bought? I didn't buy anything. I just left. <laughs> yeah. She bought Cheetos, Doritos, and Munchies. No, I went to bed. Oh, so, so, Pat, I got a question for you. It, it is messed up as this political arena is. How many states are going to legalize marijuana before someone at the federal level says, hey, we need to undo this? Like, not, not undo this, like, make it illegal again, but undo this is like, we also have to put it on some ballot for the United States to vote on. I think we got a minute. 28 states now? 25 or 28 states that are legal? For I, recreation or for uh, medical? Oh, for medical, yeah. Yeah, we have 28 states for medical. I, th- I think we have a, a long while before that would pass on I a mean, federal level. I think if, that, if Biden took that on as his platform, he'd crush the Republican oh, Party. My he God. would crush them. Like, vote, revote for me, and I'll make marijuana legal because I can't remember anything. <laughs> we are not. We are not going to talk about he this would anymore. Crush them. After crush the break. them. Crush them. This has gone so rogue without our guests here today. I'm just saying. So, when we come back, we got some rock and listings. We're going to talk about. We'll get this train back on track here. You're listening to Tampa Home Talk. I'm your host Katrina Maidwell. We're going to talk about something serious just a little bit when we get back. So uh, stick around. We've got some brand new listings that just hit the market. A couple of these are really are awesome. Eight one three three seven seven twenty seven seventy five. You can call or text. If you're looking for a home, you want some information, or you want to be invited to our next home buyer workshop, 813-377-2775. We'll be right back. Stick around.
Welcome home. This is Tampa Home Talk. You are listening to Katrina and Leo. And Leo will be on float number 39 this weekend. And you will be on float number... Wait, you're going to be on 39? And you're going to be on... 71. Yeah, I got an invite. <gasps> Yay, what are you doing? I'm dressing as an assassin from the, the in, in honor of Skull and Bones coming out in a couple of weeks, which is the Ubisoft game that I've waited seven years from, which is based on uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag. I'll be dressing as a assassin pirate. So what crew are you going to be with? Uh, d- b- d- uh, crew Rogue. Crew Rogue. Crew Rogue. Okay. Well, we'll be in the staging area walking around to the other float people. How early are you going? Early? I got to go at 10 to pick up a wristband, apparently. Yeah. Oh, you definitely need the wristband. You can't get in without it, for yeah. sure. Yeah, so I'll be, I'll be with the crew rogues. I'll be with my friends that I've known for about 10 years. Well, on, and actually, my wife is known for like 20. So we're going to just uh, hit it up, and we're going to so try this float thingy. You're not doing the Kumquat Festival? You guys are being a gasparilla? <sighs> I'm very sad. But the Kumquat Festival did stand us up today and didn't show up for the, the radio show. Yeah, they didn't. They'll be back for the other thing once they merge. But, yeah. yeah. Does it happen Sunday also? I don't. I thought it was one day. Isn't it only Saturday? Well, the Kumquat Festival is over two days. But oh, uh, let, let's be honest, that? Pat. If you, I'm walking Bayshore from Bay to Bay up to Jackson's, and then I've got to walk from Jackson's home. Am I going to want to go to the Kumquat Festival the next day? Yeah, probably. Not. But for those interested in not doing Gasparilla, I highly recommend the Kumquat Festival, which is in Dade City, I'm only seeing which Saturday. is Saturday, January 24th, from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. It usually starts winding down around three. Make sure you check out all your exciting kumquats. I can get kumquat ice cream, kumquat pie, kumquat chicken from the local restaurant. 23 Kum- hours, 8 minutes, and 9 seconds. Kumquat beer from the brewery. It's always a fun time. Little craft fair, little quaint downtown. Um, Dade City is always a nice place to stop in the downtown. You should stop and check them out right after Ren Fair when you go in February and March. Check them out for the pre check them out tomorrow for their kumquat festival. It's kitschy, it's orange, it's quaint, it's awesome. Oh, yeah, I love I've never had it. Is it sweet? Sour? It's a little tart. Imagine imagine an orange like that's lime? really small that you can eat the eat the rind. It's like an orange key lime? No, no, no matter how hungry you are. And when I was a kid, my mom wouldn't let me eat until dinner time. I tried to eat kumquats. I love kumquats. You just pop the whole thing in your mouth. I'd rather starve. And I'll tell you what's worse than a kumquat. A, uh, one of those little uh, things in the sewers that you eat in the swamps. Swamp berries? No, those little lobster things. A crawfish. Oh, crawfish. Oh, that's, that's weird. What are those little berries? They look like grapes, but they're really orange, and they kind of get slimy. Um, oh, you're talking about the Japanese plums? No, not the Japanese plums. They're like they're like the size of like grape tomatoes, but they're orange. There's some kind of berry. Oh, I know what you're they're about. they're they're slimy. Sli- they get slimy really quickly, and Ew. they're just disgusting. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, but no, kumquats are delicious. Come check come check out. Highly recommend the Kumquat Festival. Date City tomorrow between 8 and 5. It really starts winding down around 3. Get, you can get a pie to go. Um, great festival. Anytime a city fully embraces a festival, all the vendors are selling like little kumquat mugs and kumquat shirts. Um, there's, there's this one vendor we like to go to every year. They do the Mortal Kumquat. So they make a kumquat dressed as one of the Mortal Kombat characters and put it on a shirt called Mortal Kumquat, <laughs> which is phenomenal. I like the one that they did uh, Liu Kang one year. He's wearing the little headband and he's got a little kick going and it's a kumquat. Or you can do Gasparilla and drink and party and be merry. <laughs> Speaking of Gasparilla, let me tell you something real quick because I know you want to get to houses. Can you imagine the people that are out on the cruise ships right now that return tomorrow and they didn't know anything about Gasparilla happening or the ones that are flying? Oh, my goodness. You have to go down to the port and the streets are closed. There's pirates everywhere. There's everything going on. They're probably going to be like, what the heck is going on in the city? So here, here's, a, here's a pro tip. Here's a pro tip for Gasparilla. And I only know this because I try and avoid it every year. Pro tip for Gasparilla. If you're trying to get south of Bayshore, like... Davis Island, Harbor Island, Channel Side, Ebor. There is a there is a, a cheat you can do, a life hack. The roads to the hospital have to be open. So you can take the roads to Tampa General and that overpass is going to be open. So you can actually get across Bayshore into those sections and once you're over there, you can migrate around. That that's your pro tip. If you're looking to get into the district, but the roads are already blocked. Use the roads that take you to the hospital. 
So last week was the Gasparilla Children's Parade, and Maddie and I were in it, and we were we were walking. We went and had dinner at the Tampa Club after, and as we're walking, there was a little girl and her grandmother and her grandpa, and the and I think they didn't know it was a children's parade going on, and they started wandering down the street, and the and the you can see the floats leaving, and basically the little girl's like, oh, the parade, the parade, we missed the parade, and then the grandma's like oh no it's still going on look and she's just pointing to the floats leaving and the little girl literally like maddie and i were just walking by when all this is happening the little girl starts crying and she's like no mimi we missed it like and just so we walked by i had a big set of pink beads still on my neck and i handed it to her and i said no you didn't sweetie here you go so i gave her some beads and maddie gave her some beads and maddie had a little sword for her yes the crew of brigadoon was giving out swords so i made sure i saved a couple for the little kiddos and for a couple clients that we saw we walked too. by right at the right time with this little girl was so happy well i don't mean to rush you but we have 90 seconds 90 seconds it. to go through the listings. Yes, so first one, Plant City, 4210 Neesmith Road. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Okay, Katrina, four bed, two bath. This home is amazing. At Listed at 315000 a little over an acre. This is a fabulous property, This isn't is it, a great property for someone that has horses. So the owner of this property, we sold her the property a few years back, and she actually had horses, and she has since sold the horses, and she's moving out of state. But this is a great property already sectioned off for someone that has horses, and it's only 315000 for over an acre. Wouldn't you use the horses to travel out of state and move? Like I, That seems just to me like me. I would use the horses, hitch them to my wagon, and take my stuff with she me. She donated them to some place for people that want horses but can't afford them because apparently when Which her kid everyone. was well her kid was <laughs> her kid was young and they got a horse that was donated so she wanted to give that back to that same cause mm -hmm. a gift horse yeah All right and then so in wesley chapel this one is a relatively new listing at 7400 spandrel drive three bed two bath listed at listed at 380,000. this is a great property as well very open floor plan beautifully landscaped um, backyard has pvc fencing and you know what's cool about both of those? I sold both of those houses, and now my team is, like, reselling them. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. I love it. And then we have another one in Port Ritchie, Exor Lane, Oldsmar, um, Maplewood Circle. Uh, one in Cape Coral, still lingering around, 226 Northeast 10th That's Avenue. because we have to go bury St. Joseph there. We're going to yes. have to do that soon. And then we actually have a new listing coming up at 831 Maple Court, apartment 209 in Dunedin. All right. So if you, if you want more information on these, you're going to have to call or text our off-air number because we are out of time. 813-377-2775 caller text we'll get you the latest and the greatest rocket listings 813-377-2775 remember love where you live or we're gonna fix it happy gasparilla